And we are back for more Resident Evil. <laughs> Last time, we tried to figure out how to get the actual armor key. And before that, we ran into a Crimson Head, the very first one of the game that I found. And he scared the shit out of me. Because when I thought he was going to die, he... He, I was waiting for him to get back up, and I'm like, yeah, he's probably gone. So, I just decided to say screw it, and I went near him, and then now he got up. Man, that was just, like, so bad. Okay, now we're going to open these double doors. And this is gonna, this is a happy room right here. The key here is to... Oh, this is a pretty annoying puzzle. You have to move the knight statues in the right way. Like, you have to just... Until they all go retract back. Retract back. And, uh, when you push one, sometimes one pops out. So you have to just keep... It's like trial and error, pretty much. I just keep playing with it a lot. I just... And I eventually get it, but... It's, it's pretty tricky. There are some notorious puzzles found throughout this franchise that I can remember. This this one's not too bad. And then you'll get the water like the water moving puzzle on Resident Evil Zero. Oh my god, that one sucks. And even worse yet is that, and probably the worst of all, um, is the water solution test puzzle on the... Uh, on Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Man, that one... First off, I think it's random the, every time. And it's just so difficult to figure out. Every time, I think I need to look online to figure out how to move the pieces because it kind of, kind of look like Tetris pieces or something. But yeah, that's, that's one of the parts I just absolutely hate about the game, even though it appears towards the end of it. I think it's like before the last area or something. No, actually, it might be in the last area. I can't fully remember. But... And now we've solved the puzzle, and now you go to the switch, and... Woe to these who disturb my sleep. Should you press the switch? Hmm. It would be... I mean, the first time through, you'd be like, should I push the switch or not? Well, basically, if you don't solve that puzzle correctly and you uh, press that switch the room will fill up with um, gas and I'm pretty sure I don't know if you can get out or not I think it's death so yeah you gotta you better watch it save often if you're not used to this game that's all I can say but we've solved it correctly and the bars have opened up and now we found this jewelry box and we figured out how to open it, and lo and behold, it's a freaking death mask, and it's without everything. Wow, so that's that's the most grotesque mask, oh my god. Alrighty, that's one annoying puzzle down, now it's time for another one. I mean, they weren't annoying, because I figured them out within like 2-3 minutes, but some of those, some puzzles that just take me forever, I just can't stand them. I can think of another one that comes to mind on uh, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, which is an excellent, excellent game. There's this puzzle when you're in the, the peach section, and you have to concoct the, this potion that'll make you invisible. Oh my god, I freaking hate it. It took me forever to figure that out, and my younger bro, of course, gets it right on the first try. That's just what he does. That shit drives me nuts sometimes. <laughs> Okay, looks like Wesker left us a note. He's dropped supplies in this room. He dro oh, yes, he indeed he did, and I will take those. Thank you, Wesker. So far, you've actually done something right for once. And speaking of Wesker and Jill, where the hell did they go? And where the hell is Barry? He was gone since the start. Right, we're gonna get ourselves prepared 
and uh, for the next area is you want to have some open inventory spots. I wonder if there's any kerosene left in there. I don't know. Alright, now to another armor door, which is just up these stairs and down the hall. Heh. <laughs> when you go in here for the first time, I bet you you're gonna... That might be a little bit of a jumper right there. It's like, really, this place is really ominous. And it's ominous sounding, too. This freaking music is freaking terrifying, in my opinion. And this room, especially right here, is probably one of the scarier ones in the game because of this, first off, this view right here. When you first come in, it's like something's down there watching you. And then, then there's this bed and it says that there's footprints going through the bed and man that's just creepy as hell it's like someone just got pulled out of bed when they were sleeping wow and that's the first first aid box we found and, and there's like various useful supplies it's not always a first aid spray but in this case it is and by the way the first aid spray will completely recover you fully so it's save those for dire moments Whenever you're beaten, broken, and scarred. And I believe that's the name of a Metallica song. And yes, I think they are about my favorite band in the world. I don't know why, I just really like Metallica. I was... I I fell in love with it at first. The first time uh, my bro showed me the, the, the song One, I freaking heard that thing. Man, it sounded so cool. And it's, ep it's probably one of the most epic songs I know. And that was because of Guitar Hero. Because it was going to be one of the songs. I think he said it was going to be the last song on it, pretty much, which it is. Except for The Devil Went Down to Georgia and fuck that shit. <laughs> but I hated the boss battles on Guitar Hero. Oh my god. So annoying. I couldn't beat The Devil on hard mode, but I beat everything else pretty much. And I was able to beat everything, mostly everything on Expert eventually. I got down to the final chapter, I do believe. But yeah, the, Guitar Hero is a pretty fun time. I haven't played it in a while, but every now and then I'll get it out and play it, or I'll go down to my friend's house and I'll play it. He's pretty freaking good at it. And Metallica actually made an entire freaking game, Guitar Hero game. And yeah, you know, I definitely had to get that. Okay, we were ill-prepared in a way, I guess. Or I just had to free up some more inventory spots. Now we're going to go into this other room. Ugh, this, oh, there's something about this area. It's so, ugh. And there's another old mechanism, an old lock that required the old key. Yeah, this is a nice room right here. I think you got something swimming in that aquarium tank. Alright, I know there's something around here. Researchers will and letter, my dearest Alma. Let me first apologize for not being able to call you a man wearing sunglasses. Okay, well, I scrolled through that pretty quickly there. All right, this is uh, now what kind of writing to Alma? And I guess he's talking about how he's gonna die. Well. Yeah, so a virus leaked, and that's possibly what's causing all this havoc, but where the hell are they researching this shit anyway? Yeah, he's pretty much writing his death note there, because he's, he knows he's probably about to get gnawed, completely killed by these creatures. Martin Crackhorn, that's an interesting name. I don't believe I recognize that name anywhere else in this franchise. 
Oh, we took a fish hook. How random. Okay, this is a this is another puzzle. We got to figure out where which things go where. And uh, you don't want to push that switch yet. You want to put something there. Now, if we got a lore of a bee and a bee specimen. So, what you want to do is you want to combine the lore of the bee and the fish hook you found and then place it inside. Hmm. Still didn't work. Perhaps I can put something in on the other side? So let's try switching them. Let's do the old switcheroo. Mmm, shit. My god, I can't remember. Uh. <laughs> Alright, then I guess we'll try that one. But I don't feel like pressing that switch yet. I think I might. Yeah, you can insert that. Okay, so I can't do anything there. So I can only work with putting something in those two areas. It's two little, like, wall. I don't know what it is. Pinups. Okay, I solved that puzzle. And it's all it is is for this. Oh, what the hell? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, that thing was the actual bee specimen I put in there, and it came to life. How bizarre. Okay, that wasn't enough to kill it. You should have stepped on it, Chris. Well, grab that wind crest, and let's get the hell out of there. Because I don't want to be get stung by that bee. Bees suck. I, I, I mean, I'm not afraid of them at all, but... Man, I tell you what, those rare times where I got stung, it was... It was traumatizing, cause well, it happened when I was young, and I know it happened the one time on one of our camping trips, and the one time it ha I remember it happened out by our uh, sun porch. Man, I tell you what, when you're young and you get stung by a bee, it's traumatizing. I tell you what, I at least I haven't been stung like at least there wasn't a bee like ever inside my shirt or. <sighs> in my shoe or even in my somehow I opened my mouth and it flew in my down my throat or something well that would be bad I heard that happen to somebody once but yeah if you uh press that switch and you don't have the right thing in there um a, a whole bunch of bees will fly out I think at ya maybe I don't know you, and then again, nothing did happen. So maybe that doesn't happen. <laughs> God, I'm so confused sometimes. Puzzles, they can just confuse you in this game. Puzzles will always be kind of like a eh to me. I can think of slotting block puzzles on Zelda in the ice caves, and man, those are bad. Especially the ones on Twilight Princess. Puzzles are interesting, though. They're, you gotta Sometimes you just gotta do them, and it's like... And, yeah, okay, let's do this shit. And I always get through them. No, you can't combine that stuff. Ugh. I want to fire off a shot to get more room. Well, I'll see you next time, guys.